Right. Welcome back. Today we're going to be playing around with the Serpent AI library. I uh, should probably give a bit of uh, background as to what this is. It's a game agent framework helping you to create AIs and bots to play on any game you own. Obviously in beta. Otherwise everybody would have heard of this if this were out of beta in... Um, anyway, so this is a game agent framework with many powerful tools to assist developers in the creation of game agents. You can turn any game you own into a sandbox environment for experimentation, all with Python. Um, the reason for this framework's existence is to first and foremost to provide a valuable tool for machine learning and AI research. Um, and it looks fun for a hobby sort of thing. So yeah, that's Serpent AI. Here's an example of it being used. Here's another example of it being used. I have to admit, I'm kind of lost in all the details here, but we're going to give it a go. Um, for the sake of this stream's quality, I have read through and performed the entire installation guide for Windows. Just giving everybody a bit of a disclaimer here. Um, and this um, it was a bit daunting, I entirely agree. But it turns out that uh, this was not as difficult as it looked. It was just painful, but it was not difficult. You won't have as much flexibility as you would on a Linux environment, but we're streaming on Windows, so I had to install it on Windows. And we're gaming on Windows, so we installed it on Windows. So, initial requirements, you have to have Windows 10 for the WSL library. I'm not actually familiar with what that stands for. Uh, I'm not a Windows expert, unfortunately. Uh, you need the Visual C++ Build Tools 2015. Um, only if you don't already have Visual in Studio already installed. You need Python 3.6 or better with Anaconda. Um, Anaconda is a distribution of Conda. Um, I'm not entirely familiar with all the details therein either. Um, although I believe that Conda is a package management and distribution system, but I could be mistaken. Um, either way, this is what you need. So you need to get Anaconda 4.4 with Python 3.6. Get that installed. Construct um, using Windows PowerShell. Construct a Conda environment. Create a directory for your Serpent AI projects. Activate the Conda environment, and then go download the third-party dependencies, which are the Redis server for capturing frame buffers and is it in memory storage. Um, so you have to get install um, Bash for Windows, and you need to install um, Bash on Ubuntu on Windows, and then uh, with elevated privileges, you need to go get some updates, install the Redis server, configure it, restart the Redis server, and then you have that up and running. Then you need the Tesseract library, which you've seen we've used that previously with Cookbot. Um, so it's an OCR library. I may or may not have this installed correctly. This may fail somehow, but I'm pretty sure I've got this installed right. I didn't read through this as closely as I should have. But you need all that so you can do optical character recognition. Um, I'm not sure if there's a way to install. I, I wonder if long term, if they when they go out of beta, if this Tesseract is going to become an optional dependency just for ease of installation, because it's not the easiest thing to install either. Um, and then optionally, you could install GPU accelerated TensorFlow. I didn't bother doing that. I don't even know if I could with my video card get that working. Then you have to install the Serpent AI. Now that you have all the dependencies as well as the environment uh, set up, now you have to install the Serpent AI library framework, uh, which is available through PIP, uh, Package Manager. And then, um, so the tricky part the, for this is that I had to remember that I have to go back to uh, the directory which you supplied earlier for your Serpent AI projects, 
which um, the hard part wasn't remembering where that was at, but remembering that you have to use uh, the Anaconda shell for package management, and you have to run it with elevated privileges. That stumped me for a little bit there, but I got that uh, working. Um, so I've installed Serpent AI, then did the setup. The setup failed because I'm running under Windows 10 uh, 64-bit edition. Um, so I had to Google, or I'm sorry, I had to internet search the error messages I was getting, figure out what was wrong with my Visual Studio, or what was it called? It's not called Visual Studio, it's called Microsoft Build System. Visual C++ Build Tool 2015 has a cross compiler that was not configured correctly. However, if you, you do an internet search based on the text of the error message you get during the Serpent AI setup, that will guide you to Stack Overflow. You'll fix that error, encounter another error, go to another Stack Overflow page, get additional instructions, get your Build Tools 2015 correctly installed and configured, go back here, restart the setup routine another time, um, reconfigure everything. Uh, I actually did not encounter this particular problem, but if you encounter that, you have to have your uh, SDL, Simple Direct Media Layer, or glue the GL win, uh, for Windows OpenGL library. Um, I didn't encounter that. Maybe I'm going to hit that later. I don't think so. But having all of that installed... Um, well, I'm sorry. If you hit these, then you have to go download the appropriate libraries and then configure them with the administrative privileges. So that's what the setup process for the Windows installation. Um, again, this uh, was all done for the benefit of um, being able to access all the third-party libraries, which are principally developed on Linux yeah, and similar sorts of environments there. Um, and the motivation for doing all this is that, um, yeah, uh, there's a choice between do you want to do this on Linux because um, that could be a bit challenging too. Yeah, I have to give like an incredible amount of credit to um, the people who developed this script for installation. They really knew what they were doing. But I interrupted my sentence earlier, so let me try to go back up to what I was saying, which was that, yes, that's how you complete the Windows installation for Serpent AI and then having completed that, we can move on to the next step. So, that took like forever to get installed right, getting some of the Windows libraries properly configured, installed up to the latest updates and versions and such. Um, took several reboots, took some administrative privileges. It, it was quite a doozy to do the installation, but it was a choice between doing it on Linux, which then we'd have to figure out how to do OBS on Linux, and then some games don't run on Linux anyway. Or seeing if we can get this installed on Windows, um, just so we don't have to bother with any of that, and so we can get more familiar with the open source tools and their integration with the Windows platform. So that could be a more generally useful skill. Um, so that said, I've started reading through the Hello World for Serpent AI, which um, uses Super Hexagon, which I thankfully have a copy of. Um, I think I got it through Humble Bundle or something. I don't remember. Um, but either way, you have to install it, run the game, tweak some... S okay. Um, well, I didn't read any of that. I should have read that. Okay, we'll get back to that. I was focused on, well, how do I do the coding stuff? So, Serpent AI, to add support for a new game, you have to create a plugin for it. Um, so, you say Serpent Generate Game. This will prompt you. Um, then you provide the parameters of the game name and that it's a Steam type of game as opposed to some other kind of installation. And then uh, Serpent can figure out where um, that game is installed and try to do a plugin for said game. But, I followed those instructions, but I did not follow these instructions up here, which are switch to windowed mode, 
and if applicable, add a resolution and write down the window classifier as the window title of the game. So, because I did not properly follow the instructions the first time, we're going to have to go through this a second time. In order to go through this a second time, I will need to first uninstall Super Hexagon or do a clean install of it. Um, let's just do uninstall, delete, reinstall, yes, yes, install, please, good, great. I'm actually, I've never played this before. Um, again, I think I got it as part of a bundle, and I don't think I ever would have chosen to play it because it looks very challenging. Super Hexagon. Ooh, that was pretty super. <laughs> oh, there goes the stream. Well, GG, guys. Um, no, I think if I Alt-Enter, that'll take me out of... Okay. So I'm in windowed mode. Um, yeah. I think that credits options. Press space to select. Okay. Um, okay, looks like I've got this properly configured. The window title is Super Space Hexagon, so remember that. Alright, so we'll go back through these steps here, which help generate the wrapper uh, so Serpent can manage the game. So, Serpent generate game, the name, oh. Okay, I see, I see. So I don't just grab these answers out of nowhere. This is actually the title of the game without the spaces. Okay, and it is launched via Steam. Ah, but the thing already exists. So, um, how... Okay, I'm just going to assume that's going to work. Um, then fact that I first launched the game without having the plugin configured properly, etc. doesn't matter. Alright, so to get it to launch uh, through Serpent AI, you'll need to make a few edits to the game plugin. Open plugins serpent soup da 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 game dot pi. Okay, so I need to navigate to the installation directory for the game. You know, that probably would have been a good thing to note as I was doing the installation, now wouldn't it? Um, so, this is... anybody know? Oh, browse local files. Beautiful. Alright, do we have a plugins directory? No, of course not. Why would we? Um, okay. How do I get my plugins? Um... Yeah, we'll see. I'm doing this uh, on, the, uh, f on the fly from the seat of my pants, not really having prepared it, so I don't know exactly how it works. But sure, something like that. Um, open plugins. Where the hell is plugins? Is that under... Um, my Serpent AI directory? System32 Serpent AI plugins? That couldn't be it, could it? Oh, there it is, yeah. Okay, so C... Um, okay... C... Windows... System32... Great place to be messing around, by the way. Um, Serpent AI? There it is. Plugins. Oh, in fact, I have the entire subdirectory path that I want to... Oh. Nope. Um... Okay, files. Here it is. Uh, and then edit that file. Oh, I do actually have permissions to edit it. Isn't that lovely? Okay, so open this. The constructor of the class therein should look similar to what we have here. And in fact it does. Um, replace window name 
with the game window identifier you wrote down earlier, which is apparently Super Space Hexagon, even though the game name is Super Hexagon. This is supposed to have a space. Oh, sure. Let's launch Notepad in Administrator mode, because that seems like a good idea. Um, or Notepad++, plus plus, rather. Replace app underscore ID with the Steam app ID, which is 221.640. Okay. Pro tip. You can find these on Steam. Oh, cool. Executable game. If you are doing the Hello World with an executable game... Oh, wait. Wait. Executable game as opposed to what? Um, again, this is just the Hello World documentation that we're reading here. So tweaking the game plugin. Executable game. If you're doing the Hello World with an ex... Oh, I see. This is talking... That's a nuance of how to tweak the game plugin for a non-Steam executable. Um, replace window name with the game window. Replace executable path with the executable in path or the full path do you want to launch. Okay, then launch the game from your es yeah, escalated um, shell that you have from Anaconda. So... Here's my anaconda prompt with escalated privileges. So launch Super Hexagon. Super Hexagon. Oh, I'm sorry, not Super Hexagon, but Super Hexagon. My mistake. Okay. And now what? It'll proceed to launch. You will know it can find the game window if it repositions the window to the top left corner. Leave the game running. Creating an agent game... Oh, leave the game running. Okay, but does that mean that we're not... Okay, so yeah, that's all we did. It was just offset the window. Then we want to create a game agent plugin. As opposed to what did we previously create? The game plugin. So we have to create a game agent. The actor that's going to act within it. Um... To receive frames within the game and interface with it, you must create a game agent plugin. There's also a code generator for to help accelerate development. Serpent generate game agent. What is the name of the game agent? Uh, super hexagon. Okay. Uh, isn't that the name of the game? Okay. Um, sure. You'll see some plugin installation that should end with that, that it was installed successfully. If you look at your plugins directory, you'll see the files are generated to your Super Hexagon game agent plugin. Um, so allow me to dismiss that. Uh, I thought that would dismiss my window. And then if I were to look at my plugins directory that I, <clears throat> that I had open in Windows Explorer until I foolishly closed it, Okay, but no big deal. C program files sys oh, x86 system no. Ah, oh, where was it? Serpent. No, oh, I don't remember. Okay, where were we a minute ago? C window system 32 system um, or serpent AI. Okay, we can do that. C Windows System 32 Serpent AI. Okay, so we have the game plugin. Now, where's our game agent plugin? Where'd it go? Um, Serpent Super Hexagon Game Agent Plugin was installed successfully. But where was it installed? Uh, this is too much for me to know. Um, like, that's the game plugin. Or that's a gen generalized, generic plugin. 
Um, oh, I'm sorry, this is the game plugin. I want the game agent plugin. There it is. Okay. So, oh, and here it is. Here's the taxonomy of what the plugin looks like. Okay. Open. Plugins. Game agent plugin. Files. Serpent. Blah, blah, blah. That pie. Okay. Um. Okay. Change handle play so it looks like this. Escalate privileges again. Save. Run serpent play super hexagon with agent. Okay. Do we get a hello world, please? Pretty please? Yeah! Hello world. Okay, so I killed it. But it was saying hello world, hello world, hello world, etc. Um, okay, so it's fed the latest frame from the game. You might have noticed that they're not streaming extremely fast. That's because there's a limiter that throttles the maximum number of frames an agent can see and react to per second. The threshold is configurable, but there is a reason the default uh, is two frames per second, which is 120 actions per minute, which is faster than you can personally react to any game. Can it work on a MAME emulator instance of Tetris? Well, I think so. Um, you'd have to try it to find out. But apparently you can do this with any executable. So says the documentation. But we've not tested that. Okay, enough of this. Say that on top of printing Hello World, you would like to visualize the frame your game agent saw. So you get a visual debugger. So, oh, open another terminal and, okay. Well, okay, so I suppose I should leave that running and get another Anaconda prompt open as an administrator again. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. No error messages visible. Okay, that was weird. Can we try this again? Okay, so that's printing and printing and printing. Um, paused. Paused. Oh, I see. Okay. So we can minimize shell one. Here we got shell two. Um, let's see, and then say serpent visual debugger, which allows us to see an impression of what the game agent is observing during each frame. Not sure that that's accurate, but it's better than nothing, I guess. Uh, in fact, let me move that down here. This on top of it, and this over there. So apparently that's what our agent's seeing, is just a big white screen. Okay. should see something like this appear. Okay. Resize it if needed, and position it under the game. Well, does it have to go under the game? I mean, can't I just, like, put it here? I'm going to assume that's what it means that tile the windows so you can see what you're doing. Okay, now, ch now change handle play to this. Do -do -do. Oh. Okay, well this is not going to dynamically reload, because that would be nonsense. So let me change um, handle play. Um, now, is this one of those things where this editor puts in tabs and I need spaces instead because yeah, it sure seems that way. Oh, at least some of these um, the editor didn't screw up the formatting. So, okay, save that. Try this again. I'll go to the level select of Super Hexagon. Okay, this game has a level select? Uh, 
whoops, options, start game. Okay, this looks some like some kind of level select thing. Um, you should see the frames start cycling in the visual debugger. So here's our, oh, cool. So let me put our prompt up here, our visual debugger there, and then our game window on top of that. And this is saying you should see the frames cycling through there. That's nice. Um, yeah, it looks like the, I assume the game plugin is what's determining how to obtain the captures of the game. Uh, the game agent is simply acting within the context of the game or within the Serpent library as it interfaces with the game object. I, again, I'm not totally familiar with all the abstractions at play here, but it seems to work. I have to admit, I was very stoked to see that this library exists at all. Um, and how I found it, you might ask. Um, or rather, the question would be, how did you find this? My answer was, well, I thought I had the same motivation as the developers of this particular library, which was that the OpenAI universe um, just was a wonderful concept, but the way and manner in which it got implemented left a lot of developers unsatisfied. Um, for all kinds of reasons, and I guess we don't need to belabor the point here, but my thinking was, well, I can't be the only developer that's like very underwhelmed by the way that OpenAI Universe actually played out. Yeah, right, it's capturing the windowed instance of the game using whatever libraries I installed earlier. So, that's uh, fortunate it works, but yeah, um, the way I found this library it was numerous GitHub searches trying to find some kind of bot agent automation library. Um, I didn't really have a tip as to where to start searching, but um, many GitHub searches later I did find this. And I'm like, wow, that sounds kind of interesting. And then the more and more I read, I'm like, yeah, I completely agree with the motivation of um, all the authors of this project that like what they're saying seems to carry a lot of weight um, but yeah my motivation for searching for this was that well I'm not gonna go develop my own library if somebody's already developed something that works or if they even develop something that halfway works I'd be more than glad to meet them at that halfway point point. Um, and yeah this is far exceeding my expectations of what would work on Windows. Um, so that's pretty cool. So um, you should see the frame start cycling and the hello world. Oh, yeah, I could tile my windows that way. Why not? Let's put this here. Put our thing there. No. No, no, I know Windows likes to tile my windows its own special way, but I prefer it to work this way. And I could do that. And yeah, we see hello world, hello world, etc. Um, that's pretty cool. And the reason I retiled my windows is so I could get more lines in my console because I think that vertical space is going to be interesting. Okay, so next, um, something a little more interactive. Let's add some key presses. Okay, and the following import to your game agent file. We can do that. Um, change handle play to the following. Um, namely, just add this thing at the end. We can do that. Uh, and even this time, uh, the editor didn't mangle my text. Can you guess what's going to happen? Hmm, let's find out. 
What happens when you write code that says price the right arrow key? Hmm. Not press, tap the right arrow key. <gasps> oh my goodness, it's tapping the right arrow key. Okay, um, well that's pretty cool. <laughs> I think we all could have guessed that. All right, so, yep, 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 it works. Oh, yeah, while we're at it, let's get the whole uh, visual debugger there. I forgot that's part of the experience. We totally missed that part of the experience. We need to do this again for the memes. Nice. That's pretty solid. OK. So I'd say already it's been worth it, honestly. Even getting this far, like however many hours it took me to get all the proper libraries and versions of Windows and everything, uh, just to get this visual debugger and console output worth it. Now granted, it's going to work a whole lot better than that, but um, or the, act, the agent acting and doing key presses too. but. Yeah, this concludes the Serpent AI Hello World. It was a speck of sand on a beach in terms of what can be accomplished, but hopefully it got you interested and you're curious to know more. Whew! Okay, so that's your Hello World program. So, I've gotten through. I did not do the translation. I did not read all that. Uh, I did get through the Windows installation guide, did not go through the other two. We got through the quick start guide. And yeah, um, I guess a logical next step would be to read the other documentation and figure out how this works and not just fake it. Um, just wanted to get the proof of concept going first. Um, and we seem to have been more than successful in doing that which only means it's all downhill from here, unfortunately. Um, well, wait, uphill, downhill, something. It, it gets, there's a lot to do after this. Um, I guess downhill is accurate in that um, we've done the hardest part. Wait, what? I've locked the right arrow key. Oh, that was great. Okay. Um, Show us the video where they programmed it to play Super... I'm not sure that there is a video. Um, so, yeah, at this point we're improvising, I guess. Um, so, I have confidence that this is properly installed. I guess I can leave that tab open. I hate leaving tabs open when I don't need to, but in this case, it shouldn't matter. Um, okay, so then we have the plugin system. Uh, so we're just going to start reading through documentation. I know that's exciting. Um, feel free to like search for videos and such while I'm reading through this. Because um, I don't know. I'm not intending to share any videos on this stream because they're probably copyrighted anyway. And anybody can find videos. And surely anything people find while watching the VOD is probably more up to date than what we find right now. But... Um, yeah, feel free to look for some videos while I have some fun reading documentation. Before setting out to create the framework, one of the requirements that was established was portability and ease of distribution of created experience. This applies to pieces of code for both game support and for game agents. As such, Serpent AI has been designed to be entirely plugin based to fulfill this specification. Under the hood, the, leverages, uh, the framework leverages the offshoot plugin engine for Python 3.5. Uh, Offshoot implements a very clear and easy to use plugin workflow and has useful features like unified plugin configuration access, dependency management, and callbacks. That being said, you don't need to worry about having to learn Offshoot as it's already implemented inside the Serpent AI framework. Feel free to check it out though. For now, plugin management is pretty rudimentary. You can activate and deactivate plugins through Serpent commands to respectively make plugins visible and invisible to your code base. Plugin types. Uh, game plugin. Um, easier medium and implementation difficulty and the intended developer audiences python developers and image processing experience will be useful for this kind of game plugin development 
simple development tasks would be configuring the plugin so the game launches, defining screen regions of interest, experimenting with OCR settings and uh, blocks, building an API to perform common detection and UI operations of the game. So basically you're defining the game's actions, parameters, environment, etc. as recognized by the Anaconda framework um, that the agent will need to know about. Okay. Skin plugin development could be done totally independently from the game agent development. If you want to make the biggest, best plugin out there for your favorite game, you're encouraged to do so. Game agent development, more challenging. Um, intended developer audience, Python developers with an understanding of machine learning and AI, or understanding of computer vision and Im image processing concepts. Sample development tasks, um, developing various frame handlers that approach the game or subsections of game differently, um, or just doing random play and then modeling um, uh, some supervised learning that deviates from the random play, or I mean there's all kinds of ways you could play a game. Training a context classifier to recognize areas and menus of the game. Training and registering uh, machine learning models to handle precise tasks. Combining all the tools offered by the framework and the game specific API to create a loopable gameplay flow. Uh, game agent plugin always relies on the game plugin. You can um, implement your own or browse the ones that are made available by the community, and this is what you're alluding to. Um, yeah, maybe you're right. I don't know. Future uh, plugin repository where developers can publish their creations is. Oh, it's actually planned? Dang, that's the sort of thing that I've been ranting forever about on Twitch and never doing anything about. But saying, like, how great would it be if you could make um, a way of being able to run KSP and people could publish their uh, AIs that drive the rocket? Uh, drive is the wrong word, but you get the idea that um, you'd have some sort of community repository and then people could publish their plugins there. Other people could download them and maybe even use Twitch chat API to direct which plugins are installed and attempted and I don't know that could be interesting uh, be able to read, log in through github etc etc then be possible for people to serpent install your plugin so this is actually planned um, well there goes my motivation for inventing my own framework to do that um, not that I've had any time this year to do that but maybe next year there might be time um, so that's the concept of the plugin system, uh, the Serpent executable. Um, a lot of major features can be accessed by invoking the correct Serpent command. So here's all the commands, set up, grab frames, activate, deactivate, plugins, launch, play, generate, train, and capture. I'm not going to pretend to understand these, oh, try it out right now. Um, I'm going to trust that if I were to type Serpent, this is what I would see. Uh, I'm more interested in core concepts and not uh, the commands themselves. I want to understand how it works, not how to type the things to make it do things. Um, yeah. We'll come back to that. I don't really care. The game class. What's in a game? Launching the game through the proper game launcher, collecting and storing window information, starting and stopping instances of the frame grabber. Hey, let me terminate our game since apparently we're not getting back to that in the next instant or two here. So we're probably good with regard to that. Um, so launching the game through the proper game launcher, collecting and storing game window information, starting and stopping instances of the frame grabber. Feeding, oh, instances of the frame grabber. You can have multiple frame grabbers. Huh. Why? I mean, okay, yeah, I get that a game could have multiple screens, but you're really going up and above and beyond um, anything I would expect uh, this library to be capable of if you have a multi window capture ability. Um,. Also, most games don't have multiple windows, as far as I know. I mean, there's like Doki Doki Literature Club and such, where they've got stuff outside the game, as well as a multi-window something, I don't remember. But, okay, that's kind of weird. Um, 
feeding game frame instances to a given game agent instance in a loop, throttling the speed at which the game frame instances are fed to the game agent instance, exposing the game specific API implemented by a plugin, um, basically interfacing with the game, um, interfacing with the agent or agents. Wait, no, there's just one agent. Um, or at least there's, <laughs> you could have an ensemble of agents. That would be great. All right, frame grabbing. Um, yeah, when you're playing a frame grabber instance to start in the background, um, by default has a capture rate of 30 FPS and stores the image data in an in-memory stack, which, by the way, is on the Redis server, as noted in the other documentation. Um, frame grabber automate, automatically gets shut down when the main process is killed, runs the background for a pretty obvious reason, not letting the execution of the game agent would interfere with the capture. Um, oh, yeah, I see. Despite that being a capital letter, that's a colon. It runs in the background for a pretty specific reason, or obvious reason. You can't allow the capture to fail just because the game agent's executing. Um, yeah, maybe that's what it's referring to. Or maybe you have some uh, frame captures or game frame instances that are only a subset of the screen. Maybe like Tetris, uh, you have different things you want to capture and you want to specify the regions differently for some reason. Um, game frame limiter. Um, so the rate at which frames are dispatched or throttled, so can't go over a specific FPS values. Added after gaining experience building game agents with the framework. Um, yeah, you want to have a realistic APM so that you can do better machine learning. While it sounds great to have a game agent play at a thousand APM, the resulting gameplay sucks because your AI is bad. I mean, the resulting gameplay ends up looking quite unnatural and very often confuses the agent more than anything. Yeah. You're not, on your first attempt, going to develop an AI that's going to be able to act at that rate. Um, either that or, gosh, you're like in the top some percent of developers to be able to get something working like that right the first try. And then the bottom per some percent of developers for making that your first attempt. For goodness sake, don't try that on your first attempt. You'll only frustrate yourself. Um, game plugins can optionally ship with their own game API subclass um, containing some game-specific reusable functions that can be useful to any game agent that leverages it. Let me process that again. Game agents can optionally ship with their own game API subclass containing game specific reusable functions that are expected to be useful to any game agent that leverages it. Okay. So, fair enough that you're saying you can make a subclass or a utility class of some sort um, that's useful to all the agents. Um, it's not saying that you can't have multiple agents sharing that class and accessing it concurrently. Maybe you can, but just beware that um, multiple agents may choose to access that subclass. Um, so just beware of shared memory and thread safety and such. Um, all right, sprites. Um, game plugins can optionally ship with pre-extracted game sprites, uh, provided the follow, files follow the naming convention, sprite sprite name animation state index.png. Uh, they will automatically be registered and instantiated as sprite objects and stored in self.sprites, which can be useful for sprite identification. Screen regions. Uh, define regions of interest typically rectangular, defined as hard-coded property in a plugin, they allow game agent to conveniently look at a precise region of a game frame. OCR presets, um, defining presets for OCR, optical character recognition settings, namely 
or for the most part, these are pre-processing options, such as we, well, I figured out how to use with Cookbot. I didn't really belabor the point, but there's preprocessor directives you can give to um, the Tesseract library to, to parameterize the way in which it searches. Um, defined as a hard-coded property of a plugin, they allow a game agent to conveniently pick the best OCR settings for a given category. Information. Um, now why is information indented like this? Okay, so all these things are under concepts. Um, and we have another heading. So I guess this is, we're beyond concepts now and talking about modeling, or as this calls it, information, but I'm calling it modeling. Modeling the game window. Um, you have a window OS specific process ID of the detected game window. <laughs> and you don't have that on Mac OS because Apparently that's challenging to figure out how to get. Or just the libraries that do that do it differently somehow. Um, then you have the window name and the window geometry. A dictionary containing the following keys uh, with height X and Y offset. All right, game specific modeling would be a game API instance provided by the plugin. Um, where is all this? Oh, I'm sorry. So we're talking about what's in a game. A game has game window information, game specific information, um, such as the game API instance. But I thought we were talking about a game API. No. Okay, the game class. So we're talking about a library class. Um, that's okay. So the game API would be our API that we created that game itself uses. Sprites would be preloaded sprites. Screen regions would be a dictionary of screen regions. OCR presets, uh, dictionary containing name to OCR settings, uh, key value pairs. Um, then we have is the game launched, is it focused? Um, extra parameters passed by a plugin. Hmm. Not sure how a plugin would pass uh, parameters to this, but okay. Um, I guess we're talking. This is getting really low level here, unfortunately. Uh, I'm not going to belabor this, even though I'm sure this uh, is worth understanding. And we'll find examples of this later. But that's talking about one particular class. That's not a concept. That's how a class was implemented. Um, <sighs> so there's the game plugin. Is this the game API plugin that we create? Or is this, um, let's just go over the header of each of these files. It's a game plugin package, the plugin definition, game specific game, game specific game API, and bundled sprite games. Okay, so this um, it's meant to represent a game specific extension of the base game class. Okay, so this is the key concept. This is all we need to know. We can move on to the next one. This is what plugs into the Steam game that hooks everything together. Um, your game subclass, your game API subclass, bundled sprites, and the plugin definition itself. So, and then we have the game agent class, which talks about the responsibilities of the game agent. <laughs> I said talks about responsibilities. Check out. I so called that. I knew where this was going. We're like on the same page. It's like I wrote this, but I didn't. All right. So uh, it's meant to represent a generic agent that will interact with games in the Serpent AI framework. Uh, so its responsibilities of a game agent are registering and exposing multiple queryable machine learning models. Um, you know, I'm going to simplify all this in saying playing a game. 
are the responsibilities of a game agent. Um, however you choose to model that, however you choose to implement that, what you are attempting to do through doing all of these things is play a game. And how do you do that? You do um, some machine learning if you want to. Um, hold a sprite ID identifier that's aware of all the registered sprites. Registering and exposing the frame handlers, allowing frame handlers to define a setup function. Providing instructions on how to handle incoming game frames, how to react to game frames as such. Relaying input commands to an input controller. See, this is the one thing we ended up doing at the very end of the Super Hexagon game agent thing, was we added a command to press the right arrow key. Um, not press, to hit the right arrow key and release it. Um, then, yeah, other responsibilities, managing what gets displayed in the terminal. That's pretty cool that every game agent can do that. Um, I wonder how that works if, if you have multiple game agents. Can you have a terminal that has multiple agents, or does each agent bound to a terminal? Probably the latter, but it would be impressive if the former. Uh, triggering, triggering analytics events at uh, specific points in time. All right, so not going to read through all this. Um, oh, wow, there's library functions for loading a machine learning model. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's cool. All right, so then we have the game agent plugin, which describes how to interface with the game agent and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we get that. We get that this is a plugin based architecture. Then we have the game frame class. Okay, this class is still pretty rudimentary and needs to be expanded as a beta. Massive improvements are planned for 1.0. Yeah, I was kind of impressed or surprised. Um, surprised better describes it. Uh, to see this mention of a game frame here, but not in the other documentation. Or not nearly to the extent that other classes have been mentioned. Um, so what's in a game frame? Holding the image data. Tracking game frame metadata. Exposing lazily evaluated cached frame variants. Uh, performing measurements um, against other game frames. So I guess this is literally a frame in the sense of, <laughs> oh man, that word is so overloaded in so many different related contexts. Um, but here, what it's trying to represent how do I explain this without using the word frame? Data is kind of a bad word to use too because data is too generic. This is kind of like a snapshot, but something more. But yeah, it's responsibilities um, in a nutshell. Oh wait, we have a concept section. Um, yeah, that doesn't really help. But this is to try to encapsulate um, a screenshot and or stateful information about a game at a specific frame in time. Um, now granted, the word snapshot means a whole bunch of different things too. I'm not sure exactly what the best term for this class would be, but game frame is fine. Many people understand that a video has frames, like a film has frames. Um, this too has frames, um, but they also have additional information, which is not necessarily image related, um, in the sense that you could have game frame metadata, um, which is information beyond the image data. I don't know if that also encapsulates audio information. Time will tell. Um, I have to see how active this project is and when 1.0 is coming out. Probably no, uh, not anytime soon, but so that's cool. The input controller is meant to be a gateway to sending game input in the Serpent AI framework. So 
its responsibilities are to expose basic and convenience keyboard inputs and expose basic and convenience mouse inputs. So yeah, be able to direct inputs to the game. Okay, um, common tasks, defining a screen region, capturing frames and regions, training a context classifier, identifying and locating sprites, isolating sprites from their backgrounds, using the visual debugger. Thankfully we did use the visual debugger. I don't understand all the core concepts or everything that you can do with that, but we saw that we were able to get that running. Um, yes, I am following that developer's channel. Um, however, I just found out about this like uh, two days ago, and I have not seen them do anything in the last two days. But I've also had work, so it's possible I could have missed something. It's possible that um, maybe they're... I don't know. I really don't know anything about the development team at this point. Other than, like, I agree with absolutely everything that they write. Like, everything they write seems to be spot on in the most precise way. I'm just just completely taken aback that this exists at all. And that um, it also exists um, in a way that makes it look like this is something I would have wanted to write. It's one guy. Okay. Wow. Like, I, I don't know what to say. This is insanely good. Uh, I've never... I've seen plenty of projects on GitHub. I've seen plenty of projects in other contexts, just real life and outside of this. And this library is just amazing. Um, at least in the way it's described and the way it's documented and how um, it, he appears to support Windows, OS X, and Linux. And even his Windows installation instructions um, are just, like, I would have been opposed to trying to do this in Windows in the first place, but he explained in great detail why there are so many steps and that it's not as painful as it looks. And I skimmed over the steps and it looked like, yeah, just copy this command, paste it there, copy this, paste it there. There might be a few things you have to figure out on your own, but he gives like the greatest possible chance of a person succeeding uh, following his examples, which is just, I've never seen anybody go through that much effort to support doing something um, like this on Windows. Development in Windows is often a pain. He must know, like, I don't know how he manages to do it, because uh, supporting Windows is a chore in itself. He must have quite the audience, and he must be, like, amazingly good at documenting things, as well as figuring things out by himself. Something's not adding up, but um, at any rate... Um, so yeah, we use the visual debugger. Let's see, extras, game agent development starter window, workflow, that, workflow. So here's how you typically would go about making a game agent install the game. Kind of an important step. You don't want to forget to do that. Set the game to windowed mode. And this exactly follows the documentation he uh, mentioned elsewhere. Um, He's very consistent, um, both in the terms he uses and the context in which he uses them. He could literally write a book from this, and maybe that's what he intends to do. Um, it would not surprise me if this kind of documentation were something you just like copied out of GitHub, published in book form. I don't know, but it's very thorough. Um, and yet it doesn't go into any more detail than necessary. I mean, yeah, I did, like, start snoozing when I was reading, like, the game class and starting reading to every little detail that was in there, and realizing, well, you know, that's excellent documentation. I don't need to reference it off the bat because there are reference examples. 
Um, but if I have questions, this is the documentation, even though it's in the core concepts section. And OK, arguably, how the code is written is in some way conceptual, but um, you could split that into concepts and examples or something, but that might make it more difficult to understand. So it's probably best the way he actually laid it out there. Um, but yeah, he's consistent in how he does all his headings and his documentation and the terms he uses and even um, elsewhere in his documentation he uses like the same bullet point formatting. This is like, I'm just stunned that um, he formats his instructions in the exact same way so you recognize the patterns where they exist. Um, select a suitable resolution, take note of the window game or game window name, generate, etc, 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 etc. So this is your workflow. Um, and this largely follows from the Hello World example. Uh, was what I was trying to say and stumbling over and sucking at. But yeah, he took this, copied it, called it the Hello World, and then filled in all the details. And so, uh, but then he illustrates just the skeleton here. If you want to fill in the details for a game of your choosing, this is how you do it. Um, prepare the game, generate the plugin using his convenient generator, um, try launching the game, leave the game up and running, register the screen regions, extract and bundle the sprites, train a context classifier, develop your game API, and generate a game agent plugin. Um, so after developing the game plugin and doing whatever work you need to do to prepare to develop the game agent plugin, then you develop the generate the game agent plugin and develop it and make it better and better and so that's the generic workflow um, to follow in general. Um, please let there be cool examples here. This is what we've all been waiting for. Um, but I wanted to get through that formality first so that when I'm f going through the examples I'm as well educated as possible for somebody as lazy as myself, at least lazy in today's context where I didn't actually read through all the documentation but I read through all the concepts and so I get how the things plug into each other. This kind of theory has been around since uh, last century. Um, yeah, if not earlier. But, um, so the concepts never changed. The terminology is largely the same as I've read in many examples elsewhere talking about games and agents and such. Um, so he embraces standard uh, terminology in this domain. Um, but yeah, what does change is what games you can do with it and how advanced the agents are and how difficult it is to follow the examples and such. So there's super hexagon. So yeah, we could... <laughs> um, yeah, work in progress. Um, you must build a boat. Okay, what the heck? What is this? V. So, yeah, I was giving some thought um, while at work, unfortunately, during like lunch breaks and such. Uh, I was giving some thought to, well, okay, uh, I haven't actually looked at what game plugins exist out there. It's pretty cool that... Um, as exist for some sophisticated games like that. But it occurred to me, what game would be popular that could also benefit from some sort of AI? Um, so, uh, what occurred to me would be, um, <sighs> let's see. Well, first let me download. Oh, is there not a game agent here? Bummer. Um, but it occurred to me one of the easiest and yet really entertaining uh, AIs that you could develop would be for a fun little game that we featured on this stream before. Um, this guy. Let's see, is this capture? 
So, okay, obviously this is a really awesome game. We've all seen this one before. Um, I'm just going to touch on, uh, what was it? How do I get to the special game mode? Uh, player levels, was it? No, play a level? I don't know. That wasn't even what I was going for. Um, let's go back to menu. Start again. Oh, here we are. It occurs to me this would be uh, a fun thing to automate. But one thing in particular here could be far more easily achieved by a game agent than by a human, and yet it would be a very impressive display of machine learning. I mean, how hard could it be to make um, a game agent that could play in this kind of environment? You remember I've played this before. So that's the plan. Um, I think it's going to look amazing. Uh, I don't know how difficult this is going to be to script. This is obviously me playing at the moment, but... You remember how we, in Super Hexagon, defined a script that hits the right arrow key. Well, it turns out you'd actually need a script that was capable of hitting both the right arrow key and the left arrow key. Um, so that would be one challenge. Uh, but no, seriously? Yeah, this would look amazing if you could get it working. And then, there's like a zillion different ways you can try to address this problem of trying to beat the game. So, uh, so that's the plan. Um, so to be able to get there, we have to do this in windowed mode, unfortunately. Um, but yeah. Uh, I think this would be a fantastic amazing, wonderful, excellent game to um, try to automate. And getting it started would just involve having a script that could press the right and left arrow keys, right? I mean, technically you want something that acts a little bit smarter than that, but um, we're probably good enough um, I'm just going to the secret lab. Alright, so we want to generate a game. The name of the game will be VVVVVV uh, Steam Game. Alright, installed successfully. And then we want to generate the game agent. I know it suggests you actually get the game thing going first, but that's okay. Okay. That's the VVVVV game agent plugin. So that's installed successfully. Okay. Uh, let's go back to menu, because that music is unfortunately overwhelming my voice there. So, um... All right, so we'll go back to our hello world, because that provided one little factoid not found elsewhere, which would be um, how to find a Steam game ID. Okay, so the game ID of uh, VVV VVV uh, would be probably this one, 70300. So... We'll copy that, and then go edit um, plugins, vvvvv game plugin, plugin.py, right? No, it wasn't plugin.py, it was files game.py. All right, and so our window name is going to be vvvvv. Um, and then we're going to want to open um, the game agent plugin, go to files, um, uh, where is it? 
I thought I had to define some things in here as well. Oh, I have to define handle play. Um, beauty of watching an AI avoid collisions would be the... Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's... Well, I think there's many beauties to be had here. One of which is just figuring out what are all the different ways you can model gameplay. So, here I'm going to cheat, grab the super hexagon input, and say, yeah, super hexagon and VVV, VVV are exactly the same game. Um, absolutely nothing different between those two games. You just press the right arrow key. How hard could that be? Um, so, then we're going to try this and find out whether or not the two games are indeed the same. But also, let me get the visual debugger up and running. Um, just for completeness sake. Okay, so we got the visual debugger. Oops. Um, okay, so I guess that's up and running. And then we have... Um, Go back up here. Serpent play. Okay. B B B B B B. And then the game agent name would be B V V V or Serpent. B V V V V V Game Agent. Okay. Uh occurs to me I should probably get into the secret lab before going too far with this. Oh. Alright. So I've not configured something properly. Um, well, for completeness sake, let's hop over to um, game plugin. And what did we have to change here to get this working? Um, Steam. Super Hexagon. Game or app ID. Okay. Um. Okay. Steam v v v v app ID. Okay. Did I skip a step somewhere up here? What could I possibly have skipped? Serpent Generate Game, I did that. VVVV Steam was installed successfully. I set the window name and app ID. Uh, executable Game, we're not doing that. Oh goodness, this music is slightly overbearing, again. Um, so, what? Serpent launch Super Hexagon. Leave the game running. Oh, I have to launch the game first. Okay. That would be what I did wrong. Okay. Oh! V -v 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 is already running. So, let's exit the game. Alright, and launch it again. Beautiful. Positions the window exactly where it should be. Okay. Um, play the game. Pretty please? Keyboard key is undefined. You're absolutely right, I did not define keyboard key. Oops. But, I think that means we're getting close. Alright, so... There we go, we've defined keyboard key. And now I'm gonna step into the special super secret Super Gravitron. Um... 
So I've launched the game. Let's run the visual debugger. Oh. Wait. Okay. Whoops. Alright, so let's kill it over there and start it over here. Then go back here and try to run the game agent. Perfect. Guys, we've beaten the game. Watch it hit the right key over and over. It's just very gradually stepping to the right. Well, mission accomplished, guys. We beat the game. Now I just need to wait for it to get lucky enough to beat my best time. Um, but yeah, that looks amazing. Dude, 2.9 seconds. New record. Alright, well... What should we try next? Should we try holding a key? Should we try, like, introducing randomness? No, this is really where you'd want to, like, start building a machine learning model. Okay, so unfortunately, we're going to have to kill that music, as awesome as it is, because we don't have much to show right now. <laughs> we don't have nearly enough to justify the hype of that awesome music. Um, okay, so. Yeah. Um, if anybody sees, like, how I can cludge together other examples here to make an awesome AI... Um, that'd be cool. Obviously, uh, you have to be able to recognize the sprites and, or at least recognize where danger exists. Um, Flappy Bird type game using object detection for bot play and deep, deep Q learning for self. Wait, just bug this guy. Um, like, did it not occur to him that Flappy Bird type game using object detection is not a unique thing? Um, it really isn't. Uh, you could probably just drop this AI in place of the one that I just wrote. How many attempts did he put into this? Um, oh, well there's a dragon I guess. Not sure what this has to do with Flappy Bird. Um, but, yeah, we can detect objects. Content class. Add basic play. Show me what basic play is like, sir. Um, like, what do you do to play a game of whatever this is? I don't know. The Serpent AI, I don't know if it can pick up audio cues or not. Probably not, given that you're saying it's one guy developing this. And somehow, by some miracle, he made it cross-platform. Um, I'm guessing he probably didn't also get the audio cross-platform, which would be just nuts for if he did all of that. Like, that's an incredible amount of work. Um... So, how does this thing play a game? Does it just, like, supply arbitrary input keys? Because that's unfortunate if that's... Well, it's unfortunate for me if that's what it does. Because um, that means it's more difficult for me to use. Yeah, so he introduced a game agent, but... Where's the... I'm sorry, game agent. This is what he introduced there. Um... I was hopeful for a minute there that, um, oh, Game Agent does not do anything intelligent yet. Well, 
Uh, that means that there's no way for me to test what he did. Where he added all this awesome deep Q learning to figure out the best way to play whatever game this was. This isn't a generic model. Oh, okay, it does tap the space key. At least it does a thing. But, yeah, I don't think that this is necessarily something I could pirate, um, borrow, share, whatever, to make it do um, intelligent things. Um, you must build a boat. Implements random, scripted, and SGD-driven play. Okay, before we step into that, is that the easiest example we have to work with? Probably. Okay. Well, I I don't know, this like side-scrolling space shooter thing could also be useful, especially because this does some kind of... Wait, is this the same guy? D-O-P-3-T. Okay, so he tried the one thing, and then he moved on and did this one instead. Again, I don't know why he'd pick a difficult game to start with. Um, so... Featuring six levels of intense shooting action. This is a rip snort in, snort in tribute to the side-scrolling space shooters of yesteryear. We write along... We would be right at home blazing away on the scream of a booming, beer-stained arcane cabinet. Arcade cabinet. I am tired. Um, hey look! It's got mappings for keys. Perfect! It's exactly what we need is something that can push keys. But yeah, no, realistically this does like a whole lot more. Um, Okay, and then he says tweaks for working and deep DQ learning. Or whatever. I know deep Q learning is DQN. I don't know what DDQN is. But he says he tweaked something. Cool. Alright, sure, why not? Um, you saw him work on You Must Build a Boat. Okay. Should we work with You Must Build a Boat, then? I have no idea what You Must Build a Boat is. Um, learning Agent. Perfect Play Solver. Random Move Bot. Okay, relies on Serpent You Must Build a Boat uh, game plugin being present. Fair enough, you have to have a game agent. Only six commits. So there might be a chance that I can maybe understand some of these things. Um, take common operations out of the game plugin. Okay. So this leaves something behind. Machine learning .py. Um, you must build a boat game agent with underscores. <laughs> My god, why would you do that? But okay, it's legal. .py. Um, um, so, there's a chance this might not be as easy to incorporate, um, but it's probably still worth looking at at some point to look at the machine learning aspect of it. Um, just for my skimming through that, lastest, whatever lastest means. Um, so... Yeah, I'm not sure I could grasp all this uh, immediately. So I think I'm going to start with the, um, whatever the name of this thing is. Um, let's see, files would be all the files that are, resp okay, and there's machine learning models and helpers. <laughs> Okay, yeah. I I mean, I'm grateful for any documentation or anything at all at this point. So, um, I mean, if it were written in Swahili, as long as it works, it's something I could port and then try to fix. Um, but no, that's cool.
I don't mean to pick on the guy. Um, okay, so get keep there. ML models. Phew! Nothing there for me to worry about in ML models. So it's just this game agent thing. Okay. Um, so... Um, I don't see anything in this that's specific to that particular game other than the header of the file um, where we define the class name. Um, really all this seems pretty generic and I could probably just grab this and dump it verbatim into my game agent and strip out things that just don't make sense. Okay, here's some things like, oh no, no this is some generic learning stuff. Um, I hope that You Must Build a Boat was a pretty simple game, because otherwise you missed out on an awesome opportunity. Um, okay, there's some cases where it's pressing space that, you know, maybe that's something that shouldn't be done by VVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVV
assuming I have all the necessary libraries installed, um, then this is probably cool. Um, there's no way that's going to work without having the um, game information, but it's probably better than anything I could write in 10 minutes, so we'll go with that. And surely this... okay. You have the game agent plugin. Um, I'm going to star and watch this and then see is there a a game plugin. Oh! Uh, yes there is, but um, I was meaning to do a search across GitHub for it as opposed to a search within the repository, but okay. Oh wait, did I find it? Um, Is there not a game plugin? Oh, there it is. Star, watch, okay. How much effort went into this? Files, uh, sprites. Are there sprites? Damn it, there's sprites. There's always sprites, but okay. API, um, okay. I'm gonna guess that I'm gonna probably need that file. Um, Okay, first of all, <laughs> so there's some things that are specific to that game, but there's also this initial commit introducing pipeline transformer. Now, didn't I see the last development of the agent was in September? And this is developed in October, so I shouldn't need this. Theoretically. Um, but okay, it doesn't hurt to have it. Um, so this would be files API API.py. Um, uh, I just missed my Windows Explorer thing again. All right, so we need a new file. This is going to be it, and I need to save it as. And damn, I don't have my path. Can I get my path from this? No, of course not. Why should I? Okay, so it's C Windows System 32 Serpent AI plugins. Okay, so C Windows System 32 Serpent AI. Where the heck is Serpent AI? Did I not just see a second ago that, like, Serpent AI was located under C Windows System 32? Um, C Windows. Yeah, let me just get Windows Explorer open. C colon Windows System 32. Serpent AI, and then go up to plugins here, and then we want the VVVV game plugin, and under files, we're going to need a. Oh, there is an API.py. Okay, well, let me edit that um, and augment it, except I don't need to because. Okay, never mind. We already had in this. Um, not sure what his comment about a pipeline transformer has to do with anything, because it looks like I've got a pipeline transformer. Sure. We'll go with that. Um, not sure what that's about. Um, all right, so then there's the game itself. Um, I see. From serpent game API import game API. Um, not sure why his game API file looks so different from mine. 
or sorry, his game agent file. Oh, I know why, because that's not... I'm compa comparing apples to oranges. Um, what I'm meaning to compare is the game file. So yeah, this looks much more similar. Um, is there anything substantially different between these? So we've defined our game parameters, we call init. Not sure why there's so many empty lines there, we don't really need that. Uh, so empty. Okay, sample region. Okay, so this is the difference, but do I need that? Wait. Um, did he commit everything all at once and not show the steps he took to get here? He committed everything all at once. It didn't show individual commits. So I'm going to have to piece together what's so different here. But um, Okay, so we got our app ID. We initialize. We get the class instance. Um, Sure, I'm guessing all this stuff is probably better to have than to not have, so let's have it. Um, okay. Screen regions. Um, okay. HP area and score area are apparently things that this game requires. Um, and then, I don't know, OCR presets, sample preset, cool. All right, looks good. I have successfully borrowed from this fellow here, Remco Trust. Cool. Very nice. Seems pretty active in general. I wonder what he's up to these days. Who knows? These are all his cool projects, so... Um, kudos to him. He seems to be um, dabbling in a variety of languages here. Predict a boat. Source code for predicting results during 24-7 deep learning stream. Predict a boat. That's an excellent name for a project, can I just say? Okay, well, we'll follow the guy. He seems pretty entertaining and competent at what he's doing. Um, I have no idea, like, Node.js Twitch bot. allow you viewers to predict various aspects of the upcoming AI run until it starts. Once it's started, the system will then run until it's finished and gather using events using a crossbar I.O. router connected to the game, go through predictions, and choose the winners of the run. Points will be distributed among the winners and saved into database. At the end of Deep Learning Week, winners will be announced and receive a prize. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that seems necessary. <laughs> Why? Why would you give a prize for something like that? That's crazy. Uh, okay. <laughs> Want to contribute? Um. Uh. Okay. I am amused. Um. This has an MIT license. I'm going to fork this, but not do anything with it right away. But predict a boat is now something I have a copy of that I can modify. Um, not sure how I'm going to do anything useful with that, or if I'm going to just steal the ideas therein. But um, okay, so uh, so we did stuff. We've got our visual debugger here still. I bet this crashes. There's no way this runs the first time I try to get it to run.
Uh, damn it. I was wrong. Oh, never mind. Hey, check that out. We have an error. Uh, or is that just a warning? Oh, yes, yes. I was successful at crashing it. I thought so. Phew! I was going to say, I'm losing my sanity here if that didn't crash. There's no way I get something this complicated right on the first try. With no prior experience. Um, so. Alright, what happened here? Using TensorFlow backend. Did I install TensorFlow? Apparently, I must have done that at some point. Run Tesser. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. That seems uh, accurate. Um, yeah, apparently my TensorFlow installation, no, my PyTesseract installation is not detected. So I have to configure either configure this to use the existing PyTesseract or follow the damn instructions. Um, it's probably easier to follow the instructions even though I already have Tesseract installed. Just install it a second time under this environment using Conda and it'll be okay. Visit the wiki, download the exe, run the graphical installer, remember the install path, add the path to Tesseract to your path environment variable. I did not do this step. That's the issue. Or at least that's an issue. So if I go just to an arbitrary console and say echo path, uh, parenthesis, quote, parenthesis, that does not contain um, my Tesseract directory. So I can't just execute this command here. Um, But furthermore, I need to be able to execute that from um, the command prompt, uh, from the anaconda prompt, rather. So, so we need to go into our control file, uh, go to environment uh, variables. Whoops, e n v i r o n for my account. Presumably, this is the same path that's used elsewhere. I need to edit this to include the Tesseract installation path, which uh, I believe is... Um, okay, where'd it go? Where's my hard drive? It's under this PC, because, you know, that's logical. Um, where did I install Tesseract? I mean, I could look at my other code and figure it out, but that's... Okay, that's actually easier than guessing. And it's more entertaining to you if I get this as quickly as possible, so we'll look it up. Um... That's not it. Bot OCR.py. Py, nope, that's the compiled file. Where's the py file? OCR.py. Don't want to run there, just want to edit it. Okay, can we edit the file, please? Pretty please? I didn't dismiss my editor, did I? Okay, there it is. C program files x86 tesseract o dash OCR. Uh, slash, oh, tesseract.exe. So, I want to go to my environment variables here. Wait. Oh, there's path. But that's not dollar, or parentheses, path, parentheses. This is mixed case path. Um, if I want to edit the actual path, I have to go to 
system environment variables. Go to environment variables of environment variables. Oh, it's the same thing. Uh, oh, I see. These are user variables versus system variables. Well, we're going to edit. Oh, okay. Then add a new entry. See, oh, I did not expect this to be so friendly. I've dealt with previous versions of Windows, and it's like hell to type in a path name or any environment variable, really. But that seems to be something they've done better at in this version. So I'm looking for C program files x86 tesseract OCR, not tesseract API. So. Okay. Uh, let's move that up one. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, so now if I um, echo path. Well, ideally, this would have the Tesseract um, listed under it. I'm not seeing it there. It's the same thing, fortunately, but unfortunately, it seems not yet to have registered my change. Uh, oh, there it is, Tesseract OCR. Okay, it is in path. Good. So, from that, um, we can go back to, let's get the visual debugger up, let's get this, play the game, and see how it fails this time. Okay, the system cannot find the file specified. As expected, um, image to string and run Tesseract. What file did we fail to... Oh, we sprite file. Right. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll go back. Files, sprites. Okay, so this, um, I guess we're going to just download these files. Download. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure the best way to get all of these things, but. Um, save image as, uh, downloads, remember this name, and show all in the downloads directory in the folder, and then grab this, cut, and then we're going to put that under C, um, C windows, System32, Serpent AI, um, Serpent VBV game plugin, files, um, data sprites, paste, continue. And then we need to have files named this with one zero, two zero, and three zero. Um, honestly, we're not going to find any of these images in this particular game. What is important is that the file names exist. Uh, so, 
and somewhat look like game files. Or I'm sorry, somewhat look like um, image files. Uh, one underscore zero. Continue. Yes, please do continue. All right, copy, paste, yes. Copy, paste, sure. Okay, rename this to three zero and two zero respectively, just in case uh, the game just does not run without these things being defined. Okay, so that should hopefully be everything that we need to install. Here's our visual debugger again. Here's us attempting to run the game and probably failing, but we'll find out. But that's probably not the file was failing on. It's failing on some image it's trying to transmit to um, the Tesseract library. Input images must have the same dimensions. Okay, this is better. Um, not sure why we're having an issue there, but um, these are all the same dimension, right? I mean, these all... So it doesn't matter that I just copy that file repeatedly. Um, so... Okay, measure vessel HP is what's failing. Um, line 111 of our game agent. So let's go to our game agent, line 111, and say whatever you're doing, just stop doing that. Um, or rather, I'm going to change the implementation of this particular function. Um, to make it considerably simpler. There we go. Coding is so simple when you don't have to code. Easy peasy. Return vessel HP. All right, and then measure vessel score. Similar concept here. Coding is easy when you don't have to code anything. Um, just comment out all the things that don't make sense. Um, I mean, there's probably a cleaner way to do this, but okay. Uh, count equals zero. Um, oh, hang on. Score is equal to not this thing, but just that. Uh, perform OCR. Grayscale, etc. Whatever. Um, actually, that looks like something we could do. Doesn't look too bad. Um, sure. All right, let's give that a whirl. Oh, HP area frame. Similarly, you should be able to get that area of the screen. Okay. And give this one more get. Take 3,835 action. Okay. No doubt the agent is very confused by what's going on at the moment. Um, Okay, the system cannot find the file specified at line something of my agent. Um, line 137. Okay. Um, serpent OCR.py. Wait, um, in measure vessel score. Okay. Where am I saying perform OCR? Because I don't need to do that. Oh, this thing. 
I did not realize this was performing actual OCR. So yeah, score is just going to be zero. And that's going to be OK. Let's take OCR out of the equation for the moment and try this again. Now I'm not seeing the, um, the debugger console thing display updating images. So something's still frozen. Oh, wait, what happened there? Okay, something happened during the game. Um, unfortunately, I can't quite catch what it was that got printed in the console because the console flushed. However, there was something to the effect of an error happening. Um, so meaning that getting this working isn't a simple matter of just drop in whatever you feel like dropping in here. Um, so, um, hmm. HP area and score area. Well, we could attempt to define a score area for this game, right? Um, it'd just be the timer. Um, so if I print screen on this application and then go somewhere else like paint and say I want to figure out where is this? This is around like 49, 80, and 172, 108, something. Um, so we're going to say, I don't know, 48 or 49, something around there. How can I be OCD about this? I don't know. So, oh yeah, it's actually around here that we want to start capturing, which is, we'll say 20, 80. going through uh, height at I don't know 110 um, I'm not sure why my dimensions differ so much from that other game's score area let me see this is X Y X Y right Twenty-four thirty-seven is now twenty and eighty. Yeah, it's further down the screen, and then goes a bit more to the right because it extends all the way to like one seventy-five ish. Uh, and uh, one hundred something, one hundred ten pixels. That somewhat resembles a score, I think. Um, score grayscale is equal to NumPy array RG to gray. Okay. So if I want to save an image, um, that's not helpful. Um, if I want to save an image, I want to do it the easy way, which would be, well, this would work. Oh, this uses um, get current working directory. That's going to be lovely, because um, I have no idea where that's at on my disk. Um, Score is zero dot PNG. Um, whoa, what happened there? Windows just tiled my window. I told it to, but I didn't intend to do that. Um, I was just trying to change this to score dot PNG. I don't know where that's going to put it. 
but we'll find out. Um, okay. Um, so we'll see just what that does. Oh, well, I have to terminate the agent and then start it back up. Yeah, apparently getting the OCR libraries working with this is going to take considerable work. I guess I have to apologize for that not working. Also, I did not import image. Um, uh, let's try that. That's cool that the game pauses and unpauses like that. Yeah. I wonder if that's just a standard serpent feature, if that's part of the VVVVV game. Either way, it's pretty cool. Um... Oh, it's an array. It's not an image. I knew that. Um, but, yeah, I don't understand. Like, supposing that's an array. Um, well, I see. It takes an image and casts it in this array. Um, what I really want to save would be score area frame um, something like this it'd be nice to get a clean screenshot of whatever it is that the games uh, that the game agents trying to access Only because um, the game visualizer below the game just isn't doing it. Oh, well, that's also an array. Um, is there not a way to just not deal with arrays? I don't know. I'm starting to see why the OCR is not working. It's because we don't really have an image here to pass into... Um, the OCR. I mean, we say that the image is equal to this, but that's not an image. This is an array. I'll have to experiment more with some of the examples and see what it is about OCR that doesn't entirely, completely, exactly work exa uh, the way that you would expect it to work or want it to work. A uh, common task would be doing OCR, um, but I, it's not easy. Um, so, we'll get there. Just have some patience, have some faith. Um, it's cool that all these other agents do really intelligent things. Like, I'm sure to beat something like the Binding of Isaac. Like, my goodness, why would you go through all the trouble when there's so many easier games that look so much more awesome? Um, but, okay, this one doesn't have any sprites. Is this just a work in progress? First commit? Or did this actually do something? Yeah, there's no way. Well, that's the game plugin. Maybe the game plugin doesn't need to be very intelligent. Um, but the actual um, agent has to be fairly intelligent, I would assume. It actually did do stuff. Okay. <sighs> yeah. This all looks amazing. Um, what 
Wait. Oh my goodness. Oh dear. This looks insanely complicated compared to what I need. Why can't somebody just do a hello world for the exact thing that I'm trying to do? I mean, building a boat surely cannot be very much different than what I'm doing. Um, I'm just being dumb somehow and not understanding how this does its OCR. Being able to do OCR and parse the result presented by, well, this is like fundamental to the game here, right? You need to be able to understand when you're doing something that causes the timer to increase, you know? So, yeah. If that timer isn't maxing out, then you're not maximizing your score. Um, oh, this is also interesting. Um, so apparently this expects that score is some kind of integer. Or some kind of string, rather. Uh, wait, that was all commented out to begin with. I know, because I don't put a space after my hashes. That developer did. But yeah, score is just going to be um, that sort of thing. So, hopefully that works. Uh, vessel HP. Yeah, it looks... We'll give this one more go. I don't expect it to work, and... You know, if this doesn't work, then we'll just have to come back to it at some point. Um, um, I interfered with this while I was trying to access the game window. That's my fault. Yeah, I, something's not right. I mean, I did figure out that score needs to be a string rather than an integer. But, um, as long as this down here, this visual debugger, isn't doing any visual debugging, I don't know. Like, I have no confidence that this is doing the right thing. Um, I can try this once more, um, but this time invoking the visual debugger in the same manner that it was invoked during the hello world example, which was what, you have to launch the game first and then launch the agent and then launch the debugger or what? Um, while your agent is running, open another terminal and type the debugger. So you want the agent running first, is what I'm gathering from this. So let's run the game agent. So this runs the game. And then while that's running, we want to run the debugger. And how awesome would it be if that actually did anything? Um, um, I'm going to try one more thing to see if I can get the visual debugger to show anything. It's possible I might have broken the game plugin. Um, okay, so we're going to terminate the game, um, go back to the first example, which was uh, the Super Hexagon game plugin, and uh, I got rid of a thing called sample region. Maybe I need sample region. Um, for the visual debugger to actually do anything. So I need to launch the game. 
Where is our launch command? It's in our history somewhere here. Okay, so we launch the game. It positions the window as it should. Um, can I launch the visual debugger at this point? Or is this too early? Um, start game in secret lab. Okay, then let's run the game agent. And then having run the game agent, um, only then run the visual debugger. So this was working earlier with the Hello World example, but yeah, apparently whatever it is that causes this visual debugger to work is not compatible with the agent that I have. Um, so, not sure what else to say there. It'd be cool if it did work. It's unfortunate this uh, message flashes on the screen. Yeah, the visual debugger should be working at this point. Oh, what? What was that? It actually pushed a key. That was really weird. Dude, I got 4.2 seconds doing nothing. Um, but yeah. The fact that it actually pushed a right or left key uh, is progress for this game. There we go. Holy crap. Well, this merits some music now, doesn't it? Now, I don't claim that this is going to be an expert at playing the game, especially because I can't see any of the flying objects yet, but, um, yeah. Behold the power of machine learning. So yeah, the rest is technique. And by that I mean just programming in um, things so the game could recognize all the flying objects and make some attempt to dodge them. And the triangles that appear. And I don't know what else you have to recognize for this to work, but... Um, oh, also having a way to get the current time. And try to maximize that. That's pretty amazing, though. I swear, if it beats my best time, and it doesn't know where any of the objects are, I'm gonna be so ticked. Like, you have no idea how much I've tried to play this game, and play it well. So if this finds, like, some super secret strategy that just makes the game a lot easier, um, I'll be a little bit embarrassed by that. But, yeah, there's no way. So... Thus ends the culmination of hours of setup effort. But yeah. The road... A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step 
they say. Today we did the first step. Wow. Okay. So. Um. Yeah, obviously the next thing to do is just screw around with this and see if you can um, get it to be better and better and in the sense of being more informed as to what's going on on the screen and whatever else it has to know. Probably getting OCR working for the timer is going to be important at some point. Probably stripping out all the game sprites for every possible one of those um, hexes, whatever. Like, there's the left arrow, the right arrow, and then every rotation of one of those squares would be a sprite. Um, or maybe the Serpent Library could recognize rotated sprites, I don't know. It occurs to me the thing that is probably going to be most confusing for this AI is that flashing background, which is impossible to toggle. Um, now, bear in mind, this isn't the only mode that this can play in, and I think that's part of the one of the other reasons I recommended this game. Um, I recommended this game because um, uh, you can train it on this stage, and then having trained it on this stage push it into all the other stages this game has, which get progressively more difficult. Um, so that's really what it should be used for. Um, yeah, right. It's being able to judge uh, the current time, and in this case the current time is the score. In other modes, there's like a, a speed run mode that has a timer but I think also has a score for how many things you collect and such. And then at the end of play, there's a splash screen that shows your score. But yeah, getting some kind of OCR working is important. Uh, getting the visual debugger, in my opinion, getting that working is very important to figuring out what's going on. So the fact that that isn't actually working is really troubling me. I've done something incorrectly, I don't know what. Um, don't know how to figure out what I've done wrong. That's really unfortunate. Maybe if I just go through the uh, Hello World instructions one more time. Again, and do it a lot more patiently, um, maybe I'll learn something. But yeah, we got um, apparently integrated with TensorFlow and this enormous stack of other libraries just to be able to play a game. Um, and although we aren't playing it particularly well, it is progress that we're able to get this working at all. Um, there's a saying uh, in software development that you do things for accuracy first and then later tune for performance. Um, so uh, I'm taking accuracy in the broadest possible meaning of the word here, just that the agents responding to the game at all. So that's an improvement over being completely non-responsive. Um, and yeah, being more accurate um, still. I mean, it really can't be hard to improve upon this if you just feed any additional information to the agent. It will tune for something. Um, that's the beauty of the such a simple uh, technique as a neural network that you don't have to program in all kinds of complex algorithms. You just have to very accurately define your data model and your parameters. Um, and yeah, no coding required in the sense of coming up with the best algorithm for solving the game. And it'll be fun to see where this goes next. Um, well, I am in some ways satisfied that it's not managed to beat my best time of 10 seconds yet. When it does beat that, um, well, I guess it'll be time to give up to our robot overlords at that point, but what can you do? It was a good run. Um, 
But yeah, I'll see what I can do with the OCR stuff. That's probably going to be a separate stream. Um, ultimately, if you can get this kind of platformer agent moving around the screen and reacting to platforming events, um, you could start to do slightly more complex games that involve platforming. Um, just to give you an idea of what I'd like eventually to do with this, which I think would be amazing, I think people would actually watch this, would be have a bot that plays FTL. That like reads all the FTL dialogues, combats every FTL enemy. It's like the greatest undertaking ever to make that work. I think it would look amazing, even if it sucked. And probably it wouldn't suck once you gave it all the sprites and told it what to try to tune for. Because uh, there are gauges on the screen that tell you how well you're doing. Yeah, it would be super hard to get access to all the information. And, um, but if you were able to get expose all the data in a meaningful representation to the AI, the AI doesn't care whether it's playing FTL or whether it's playing um, uh, this game, VVVVVV. Um, it just cares what the input parameters are and what your score is. Granted, an FTL game goes much longer than a game of, um, what this, what do they call this? I forget, this is some kind of chamber something something, I don't remember what they call this. Um, but, yeah, this, obviously this kind of game just runs for like 10 seconds. FTL can go for hours. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think you could get a bot that plays FTL at an entertaining standard. Um, I think even if it doesn't beat the game... Um, well, the other funny thing is there there are plugins um, for modifying the parameters of FTL. So you could just progressively tweak all the parameters until it becomes so easy that like a two-year-old could beat the game and it would just mash button this AI could just mash some buttons in a similar manner and then you progressively tweak all the parameters of the game until it gets more and more complicated and starts to resemble an actual FTL game um, like I wonder if there's a way uh, to start the game with like 10,000 scrap and then you just watch it go to the store and purchase everything I think the difficult part would be exposing each particular scene to the AI. Um, also, I don't know if I have cycles to make that sort of bot um, realized. Uh, likely, um, it's probably way too difficult for me to do in a short period of time. So, um, that's a really long-term goal, I guess only because there are so many scenes to capture and so many different um, sprites and such. Um, it's probably better to start with a simpler game as a proof of concept. Um, but really, we're seeing that we have a generic th uh, game that can play any kind of platformer that has a score meter and an HP bar, um, thanks to that other library. So, yeah, the next logical step would be um, see just try a progressively more complicated games I, I think FTL would be the most entertaining one to watch regardless how good the bot is at that particular game if it has any competency at all it would be entertaining to me um, but I don't know, a more simple or realistic goal, I guess? Let me think what other games I could... I mean, Super Hexagon was out there. I'm not particularly interested in it. Um, I guess one step above this would be uh, Geometry Dash. Um, even though there's... Like, it'd be so much more difficult to recognize the sprites uh, for that game than for this one. 
this game's a sprite palette is like really trivial. Like you have uh, your agent there, your character. You have other characters who look just like your character but are different colors, which could be complicated. And you have like spikes, and that's about it. There's not a whole lot, well there's projectiles, but there's not a whole lot in this game in terms of sprites. It's just a beautifully designed game. Um, so. Oh, awesome! You finally got resolution, or video resolution options, or quality options and such. Well, gosh! Um, sorry that it took so long there um yeah we got a cool game here going see now I just feel bad because us how long have we been on the stream um let me check certainly the VOD is going to be accessible certainly at this point we can see how far we've gotten <laughs> uh, excellent work my bot Go to Lesher Bot, ever so reliable, um, telling me that I am currently offline. But no, uh, we've been up for quite a while. I mean, we could transition to maybe something else. It's just that after two hours of coding and a half hour of babbling, um, I don't know that I can code anymore today. Um, Oh, I see. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, today I... Recently I've been having issues with Twitch. Um, or rather with my ISP. So today my settings I'm are that I'm doing this at 60 FPS at 3,000 kilobytes per second. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, I've tried other settings, and Twitch seems to drop all my packets if I'm doing um, something at a lower FPS with more or fewer uh, bits. Oh dear. But if this does present quality options in the case of. Oh. Oh wow, I see. Jeez. Wow. Um, <laughs> hmm. So it's not even the fact that the bit, the bit rate is awful, it's that um, the FPS itself is problematic for the video render. Jeez. I've... I mean, I've got several primitive devices that I think can do 60 FPS, but... Um, yeah, I'm not sure what to suggest. Am I just doing a bad video encoding or something? Like, or just are all 60 FPS videos um, not doable? I had to upgrade everything on my home network recently. Um, just because, like, I was having um, all kinds of packets dropped by my ISP. Um, and so I wanted to make sure I had everything up to date before I contacted them, and they told me to update everything. So, and thankfully upgrading all my firmware, etc., has helped. Um, okay, I see. So, yeah, wow. Sorry to hear that. Um, I guess the good news is like Twitch, when it offers quality options, does offer a, a 30 FPS downscaling, right? Um, if I understand things right, I hope I do. Um,
Hmm. It occurs to me now that, like, if I had... Okay, yeah, FTL would be amazing and such. Um, my original motivation was that, like, solving an Oregon Trail type of game would be impressive. Um, but yeah, the actual Oregon Trail could actually be done by this uh, thing. Alright, so skipped frames 3, FPS 30. Oh! Okay. So it is capable of doing a 30 FPS downscale. I thought that most um, quality options are 30 FPS. I don't know how long it takes into a stream for Twitch to offer um, quality options and such, but I guess if people want me to um, keep going and do something else, I could do that for a bit. I intend to do more tomorrow. I don't know exactly what. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to find games in general that um, don't have many sprites. Um, that have complex strategies. And that can be a bit challenging. Should we just let this loose on the game as a whole? <laughs> Let's give that a shot. Let's just see how bad it does. There's, uh, yes, quit to menu. Okay. Start game. Continue. Actually, let's not go there. Let's do one other thing first. Um, let's go to the secret lab and see just what does a game agent do in this environment? Ah, I hold, I hesitate to say chess because, like, the minute I do chess, um, we get this larger audience, and I'm not really prepped for that at the moment. Um, I was thinking maybe some other kind of game. Um, it'd be funny to like throw this at Cook Serve Delicious, but that again would take forever because there's so many sprites. But apparently, this is just like um, what the bot does. I don't know why it keeps flipping like that. Apparently, that's part of building a boat or something. You flip a lot. Um, but yeah, it's fun watching it just walk around in this environment. Um. I wish I could leave that going while I do another thing. Uh, I'm trying to pick a game, though. The other thing that bugs me is that that console output just toggles on and off and on and off, and I can't really read it. Being able to read the output would be helpful. Oh, is it stuck? Or has it just mastered the game? Is it content being here? Um, let's see. What other games don't have many sprites? Not very many. Most games do have a ton of sprites. Um, I would almost say Democracy 3, but that has its own challenges. Um, what else could I do after V, 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 I wonder? Oh, 80 Days. 80 Days is basically a text adventure game. We still have to get OCR working for that to be possible, but... Um... Just throw in some sentiment analysis and see where the winds take us. It would be a thing that we could do with that. Um... It's probably not so entertaining, though. Because there's, like, no objective. Other than actually circle the world. Oh! Huh. Well, that's funny. I could use spacebar 
or I'm sorry, enter to communicate with players and terminals in this game. Alright, I'm gonna make a little bit of an ex executive decision here. You're gonna go over here. I'm gonna flip up there and like go here or something. And see where it goes from here. Net hack. There you go. Net hack would be very doable. Um, chances are it would fail at the game. It would fail terribly at first, and it would learn from such failure. Hopefully. Oh, it found the room, guys. It's gonna take all our trophies. Yeah, although I think it'd be entertaining. Oh, you know what would be really challenging for it, though? Um, that doesn't have many sprites at all. TIS-100. There's no freaking way it could possibly beat TIS-100. If it could, that would be just insane. Um... Because, like, how in the world could it develop, uh, yeah. How could it develop the knowledge to play that game? I don't know. It would look impressive. I'm sure it could beat some of the stages just through random guesses. But, um, TIS-100 is, like, entirely text-based. And so, for it to succeed at something... A task like that would just be unbelievable. Um, yeah, although I'm not sure that a, a paper I could publish would be enter any more entertaining than what other people have already published on the subject. Um, like, I think it, you just have to run it forever. Um, it eventually would beat some of the levels, but... Yes, yeah, we're, we're applying the same concept. Um, I've added a deep neural network classifier. Uh, I'm sorry, a deep Q learning machine using a neural network, um, for learning. Um... We're gonna mute that again. Um, but yeah, we are applying a very similar concept, a similar data structure, similar algorithms, etc., to what uh, was done with the Mario game. But we're taking it um, in stride here, not. I'm trying to think of what exactly makes this different, um, other than the problem domain. I guess here we're not dealing with any presupposition of uh, what the controls do. Oh, I'm sorry, no, what's radically different about this is the inability to rewind time. Uh, the Mario game would control the game. Uh, what, what's really unique about this is that the agent does not control the game. So there's no way to go back to a checkpoint and try again. Now, some games have built-in checkpoint technology, so there's ways to do that. Um, but yeah, in general, here we have an agent that has no ability to do what's done everywhere else in machine learning and rewind and try again. It just has to collectively, or just uh, amalgamate its experience over time and do the best it can based on that. Um, another thing that could be interesting is if this were capable of um, doing like Euro Truck Simulator and such. Now, I'm confused. Is this just a random distribution or 
Is there some reason that it's avoiding the trophies and or avoiding going to the upper left corner? Oh, there we go. Last 10 seconds on the Super Gravitron. I found my trophy. Yeah, so what other games do I have that I... Um... Yeah, I don't think it's avoiding anything. It doesn't have the intelligence to do that. Or rather, it has the intelligence, it just doesn't have the eyesight, the data representation of the uh, game state. It's not able to see what's going on. Yes, I guess we'll wrap VVVVV up here and pick something else. Um, that was interesting. What do we want to play next? So, um, not going to bother with that. We've got this installed correctly somehow. Although I haven't figured out how to do the uh, OCR integration just yet. That's okay. Um, 